In this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, independent property claims adjuster, specifically catastrophe, so if you're traveling for work, expenses and income and how to kind of reconcile those two so that you're bringing home as much money as possible and not spending, overspending on expenses when you shouldn't be, starting now. This is Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Adjuster TV Plus. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV. Let's talk about insurance adjuster, property catastrophe field adjuster expenses as it relates to income and see if we can't get those two numbers to kind of work out in a way that makes it worth it to travel for work. Whereas instead of you know feeling like you're spending all of your money that you're earning out in the field on your expenses. So let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, so your, your, your prime expenses as a field property adjuster after you've gotten your training, after you've gotten your licenses, after you've bought your gear and all that stuff are going to be, absolutely number one is gonna be your lodging, right? So whether you're staying in a hotel, whether you're uh, it's gonna pay for RV campground fees, right? If forgetting, you know, kind of setting aside your RV, um, Payment, if you've got one, if you, if you didn't take my advice and just buy a cheap one for cash, um, it's gonna be Airbnbs, VRBOs, it, it could be a whole bunch of different things, right? Um, so lodging is really the number one expense. And over the course of my career, um, I found that if, you know, with, with really with any expense, if you are um, really, really being as, as absolutely as efficient as possible and you're, you're making the, the, um, the most of your time on a particular CAT deployment and then on all of your CAT deployments throughout a season as a whole, then your, your expenses kind of, you know, can fluctuate a little bit, right? Depending on where you go, like, you know, a hotel, like if you're, if you're just staying in hotels and you're staying at like a extended stay or like a, a, you know, we'll say a extended stay America or Candlewood Suites or whatever. And maybe in Chicago suburb, they are this much. But if you go to Junction City, Kansas, they're this much, right? But they're gonna be like, there's gonna be an average amount that you're gonna spend every night. Um, they have better rates. Um, reduced rates for longer term stays, right? Um, and especially if you go and stay at like a longer, long, a place that's set up for a long term, they're gonna have lower rates than just if you jump into a Holiday Inn Express and it's $175 a night, you don't wanna be doing that, right? But when I kind of just take a step back, when you are looking at your overall revenue that you generate as an adjuster over the course of a season doing cap property, um, you have, the expenses are going to be relatively, relatively fixed, right? Um, but your your revenue can be higher and not have much of an effect on your expenses, right? So it doesn't cost you more money to make more money necessarily as an adjuster if you're more efficient, right? And being efficient means, and I know I'm going to get comments on this because I always do. Um, if you only can close two claims a day, then your expenses are gonna eat up more of your daily revenue or your, your, your whatever the term is, right? Your monthly or weekly revenue or the, the revenue of a course of a summer, right? So let's put it this way. If you spend $3,000 a month on your storm expenses, right? It, we'll just throw all this stuff together, like your, your fuel um, and your lodging, right? Um, and maybe some some supplies like paper and printer cartridges, it's little knickknack things like maybe it all adds up to about three thousand dollars a month, um, maybe thirty five. We'll just say just as a round number, it's three thousand. Um, and you work for five months, three times five is fifteen thousand, right? If you only make fifty thousand dollars, then fifty minus fifteen is thirty five, right? So forgetting taxes, your gross revenue, your gross, or not gross, your net revenue before taxes is gonna be $35,000, right? So in other words, if you wanted to, if you were able to make $100,000 in five months, then 100,000 minus 15 is $85,000, right? So you can kind of see, it's it's not so much like, well, it's not, the job isn't worth it because, you know, the expenses are so high. The job isn't worth it if you don't do a lot of work, if you don't close a lot of claims, right? So for me, as it's especially through my career, and I think even if I was to go back to claims right now today, probably would be even easier with all the technology and stuff that we have. Because the things that take time, the most time consuming things are diagramming and measuring roofs, right? And importing and labeling photos and things like that. 
if I can send a hover link to the homeowner and show up and have all the measurements there ready to go, I'd be able to do 10 or 12 claims, wind and hail claims in a day, I think pretty easily, especially if nowadays people aren't required to do um, settlement conversations, they're not required to make a coverage decision, they just go out scope, photo and scope, write an estimate and turn it in and go to the next one, right? If you cut that part out of it, the settlement part out of it, and you're still making basically the same amount of money, then you can do even more because that's a, that's a, a kind of a big piece of the work is all the extra follow-up phone calls and things like that to settle up or to, to negotiate with contractors. If you if that part is taken away from you, then you can do more. So there, honestly, there really isn't any excuse for all the, the noise that I seem to hear on social media about how you can't make any money doing this. Photo and scope is killing everything. Honestly, I think you could probably do even more with photo and scope because again, especially doing catastrophe deployments, the expenses are gonna stay right here, and the more claims you can close, the more work that you can do per day, the, the less and less that that really matters. If you wanna watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad-free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.